The GovX Show is supported by Forrester, helping government organisations perform at their best. Visit forrester.com to learn more. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Government Transformation Podcast. I am Tim Coulfer, Community Director here at GovX Digital. And joining me today is Robin Wiles, who is the Market Principal for the Southwest at the Public Sector Technology Experts, Made Tech. They work with public sector organisations across the UK and are in a fantastic position to understand what's going on in the terms of digitalisation and those emerging trends and technologies. We asked Robin to run the rule over the current state of UK public sectors embracing of technology. What are we good at? Where can we improve? What are some standout projects that we could be learning from across the sector? And also what are some of the ingredients in terms of how those engagement and performance teams that are working get to grips with the technology and function more effectively? Loads to drill into, so we're gonna jump right in now. So Robin, welcome to the GovX show. Great to have you joining us today. Hi, Tim. It's great, great to be here. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we're going to talk about uh, digital transformation, digitalization uh, in the public sector. Lots of it going on, lots of flavors and shapes of it going on in different organizations and also a few different understandings of what that really means. And obviously, you working with Maytech with lots of public sector organizations, so open to lots of different examples and experiences. So really looking to sort of jump into that conversation and find out a bit more about what you've learned, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're doing. Uh, so let's set the scene a little bit. If you could maybe maybe tell us a bit about your role uh, with Maytech, you know, how you're engaging and working with the public sector before we jump into some of those other juicy topics. Sure, okay. So uh, yeah, I joined Maytech just over a year ago now. Um, and I joined originally as a tech pr principal, so working with clients at a high level, uh, uh, a technical level, uh, overseeing some, some of those projects. And then maybe six months after I joined, I moved into the market principal role, um, where I now oversee, um, I guess, all our people, clients and work streams in the southwest and Wales region. Great. Great fab. So uh, I guess you've got some, you know, got some good relationships in the public sector, I know, as an organisation. So really interested in sort of finding out a bit more about how those are playing out and, and what some of those kind of big themes are that are emerging. So let's let's start at the big level uh, with it, what may may feel like an unfair question, like asking you to sort of mark the homework of the UK public sector. But there's lots of digital activity happening, lots of digitalization happening, uh, some you know, huge transformation programs, some sort of smaller projects and stuff. Looking around that kind of public sector landscape uh, in the UK, what's, what's your take on, are we any good at it? Are we, are we making good use of the opportunities that digital offers or what's, what's your view? I think the picture overall is really variable as you, as you might expect, because you know, public sector itself is a hugely varied kind yeah. of landscape, right? So you, you can say it, but what it entails is actually vast, isn't it? You've got yeah. central gov, local gov, healthcare, all those associated agencies. So, yeah. Right. So. And, and, I, and I guess what I've seen, in, you know, in, in the, I guess as a citizen, right, f firstly, and then in the short time that I've actually been involved in, 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 in public sector, which I have to qualify, it's been just over, over a year. Like I've seen an enormous amount of, of, of effort and desire to, to genuinely improve how services are delivered via, via digital platforms and, and services. So I see like a huge amount of energy around and a huge amount of commitment to it. Um, but I think the, whether we're making the best use of opportunities, I think in some pockets, yeah, we are, but overall, I still, still think there's a lot to learn and there's a level of maturity that needs to be reached. Um, I, you know, I'd say as a nation, uh, you know, against that, we, we, you know, we're still, this industry is still young, right? And we're still learning stuff, we're still finding ways. And there's still that period where, where we are, we are, we are making mistakes that we're going to have, we're going to have to fix. But I think all the time we are learning, we are getting better and better. And I think, yeah, I mean, for me, um, I see some great, I see some great, great work going on out there. I see a great increased use of data. I see organizations now starting to collaborate more and think about how they can share and work together to reduce that duplication of effort, which I think has been a huge, huge mm. issue in the past, to, to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, we heard, we've heard lots of examples of that more collaborative approach, you know, between public and private sector, but also between public sector organizations themselves. And I guess technology and data and interoperability 
a nice sort of conduits to that you know we they're all sitting on these stacks of data and the, the more we can kind of layer them up and share them to generate new insights the better right absolutely it's also a very hard thing to achieve you know especially on a, a, a national level so i think it's you know it's, it's down to organizations to really understand what would benefit them and then to go out there and to make that happen on a kind of on a kind of uh an individual basis and hopefully that will grow and from that we will be able to see the models that work at a larger scale for actually, for actually doing that so i kind of see us where it feels like we're still into a little bit of an exploratory and discovery stage with that with that with that kind of work but i can only see us getting better at it over time yeah and i suppose it was always going to be a mixed picture you know that asking the question i guess i I knew where we go because you know it's it's so varied, it's so diverse, there's so many different levels of maturity in different organisations that you wouldn't expect anything else but that varied picture. And I, I suppose what what would be interesting at this point is to maybe come down from that big top level and start to look at what's what's actually going on, what what examples and sort of uh, success stories maybe are out there, both in terms of what you're doing at Maytech and working with public sector supporting them, but also any other projects you've seen around. So. What, what might you highlight as good examples of that successful digitalization in government or other public organizations? Yeah, I was thinking about this, and obviously thinking about the work that we've been involved in as um, Maytech, but I mean, for me, I, I'd call out the work that's been going on at Hackney Council, that we're kind of really, 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 really proud to be he heavily involved in. Um, and their approach to, to digital delivery, I think is just fantastic there. The, the way they have, um, have worked to build like an open, um, extensible um, ser services on top of a really well-defined API platform has actually very quickly paid huge dividends for them as, as, as an organization. It feels like a really forward thinking and kind of like a mature approach to dig digital services in the public sector. And what, how, do they, how do they sort of play out in terms of that, the, the technology is there to do a certain thing, and then does it play out into sort of the way they're delivering or how might yeah, we feel I mean, the benefit? I think it's really the way they've been able to, um, the way they've been able to, to, to generate further value from work that's been done. So, so for example, they, they had a project to produce a, a, a single customer view, right, for their benefits and, 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 and housing application. Um, and I think that had to combine data from maybe five dis dis disparate sources to, 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 to provide that view. And that's like a really important project, right? That, that's a really useful thing, both for, both for residents and, and, and for council staff as well. But I think the most important, the most interesting thing is, is once they'd done that, they were subsequently able to, to adapt that, that piece of work for their manager tenancy application. So the way they built it, it was very easy for them to pick that up and actually adapt it to, for, 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 for another area of their, service, of their services. Um, and in, in the same vein, as, as part of the, their housing needs application, they, they built um, uh, evidence upload tool. So, so um, residents can upload evidence of, of, of issues and things, things, things that they're having. Um, and they were able to take that component and basically just repackage that to support school admissions as well. So the way they thought about architecting it just makes that, you know, once you've done one piece and you've thought about it in an abstracted way, it's very easy to pick up and, and, and reuse those those components out, out elsewhere. That's great. And and actually we're hearing a lot more, particularly in local government, actually, about that, about that sort of sharing best practice. You know, they're not yeah, a local authority in London isn't in competition with a rural local authority in another part of the country. So if you develop a solution, and I know it's one Matex commitments is that kind of open source approach as well, isn't it? That that sharing whether it's code whether it's ideas whether it's you know best practice whether it's operational models whatever it might be if we can if we can get those out there get those examples widely known it's kind of I guess partly what we're doing ourselves here in terms of you know events and podcasts and so on is to get that best practice shared absolutely well i mean as, as, as you know at maytech it's our mission to, 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 to use tech to improve society for everyone right so the way to do that quickly is to share what is actually working in one place with, with, with everyone else right yeah absolutely so um in terms of how how you get this stuff done which is always the challenge i mean you know every everybody has good intentions everybody wants to use technology to deliver better outcomes these these are all you know t entirely noble and uh you know fantastic uh, attempts to change people's lives etc but get, getting stuff done can be can be the challenge and as you've said organizations aren't all the same so it's not necessarily going to what works for one will work for the other but when you when you joined us for the government transformation show in november 
you, you gave a presentation around I guess what you called your principles for high performing teams which yeah, yeah. sounds sounds really really impressive and I'm and I'm keen to drill into those and, and I know you're going to caveat by saying this is this is not you know the the blueprint for everybody but um maybe you could talk us through about those because I, I was struck by some of them they weren't necessarily all the ones you would expect so uh I think you had the three the three principles for these for these high form digital teams and I think the first one was around silos tell, tell us a bit about that yeah so I mean silos wherever they exist are a killer to productivity in a, in a, a, a a killer for, 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 for in, in, in innovation really um so i think firstly it's really important when you're when you're starting a, a, a delivery or someone like maytech is coming in you, you have to get everyone involved from all, all parties both on the on you know the the, 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 the client side the stakeholders e even the users you have to get them collaborating and, and instead of working in their kind of function related groups and having handovers be between them um and then i think the way we generally like like to work is our, our ideal way is we like to set up our our, our deliveries our, our, our software delivery projects to work in, in vertical slices and, and by that I mean that's where you have like a, a single team so you take a one team approach and that team becomes wholly responsible for end-to-end -end delivery of every single feature and that's how you actually deliver end-to-end -end. you have a piece of functionality and that gets packaged up and delivered to, to the end user in one go and and by doing that, um, you still have those individuals performing their own roles within the team, but the team as a whole like, is concentrating on delivering that, that, that unit work together, usually within a predefined time, let's say a week or two weeks, if you're, if you're using some kind of ag mm -hmm. agile framework, which I strongly suggest you, you, you ought to be. Um, and then by doing that, it, it kind of necessitates like having a truly cross-functional team which in, the, in turn provides that diversity of views and skill sets, which get which get cross pollinated, and ultimately that 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 leads to a high, higher quality solution and a more considered solution just simply by having those different people and those different skill sets working on moving that functionality from inception to 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 live in one go all all together, uh, and I guess it also puts everyone involved in that directly within the value chain and that means they are as individuals able to share directly in in, in the successful outcomes that, that you've reached and that's hugely powerful that's the sort of thing that once it starts happening it's almost slightly addictive to a team and they want to continue to do it and it becomes faster and it becomes and it becomes smoother so i think that's really really important that breaking down those silos and working collaboratively as a team to to, to deliver a fun functionality to, to, together yeah and i was, I was actually um Rewatching one of our other conference sessions from from back in November, and I think it was HM Land Registry's example, where uh, as well as as well as these kind of cross disciplinary teams being a better way to get stuff done, actually the legacy is you've got policy people with digital people sharing information. You've got that those ideas flowing across. You then end up with policy people who understand a bit about digital, who understand a bit about data, because they've spent time working on a project collaboratively with their colleagues, and that's that's a real sort of step change in many ways. It is as well, and it means that when a supplier like Maytech um, moves away from the project, some of that is left, some of that knowledge is left of, of, of the right way of doing it. So hopefully, when the next supplier comes in, the, you know the the public sector organisation is going to know what good looks like, is going to have experienced it, and is going to be able to. To make sure that that actually gets gets re 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 repeated for all their subsequent projects. Yeah, absolutely. And one of our one of our kind of themes for twenty twenty two when we we did sort of looking ahead at the trends that are emerging. I think there's a really interesting change in the way government and suppliers work together. It's it's, it's far less transactional now. There's much more mm. openness to developing the project specs together. That sort of being in at the beginning rather than just a sort of can you build us this widget? Thanks very much. Oh, I think, you, love. you know, for, for me, that is hugely important that um, public sector organisations can are able to develop long term st strategic relationships with, 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 the, with the right suppliers and they can work for a long time together, you know, to, to develop, develop that. We see we see greater success in, in, in that regard. And and I guess being able to adopt, be able, be able, I, I guess, be able to learn from the private sector and really embrace like a proper product lifecycle approach to, to, to digital service in, 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 in the, the, the public sector. Um, and that goes like, you know, there's lots of stuff that happens when, when, you start, when you start doing that. And they will surprise like us to upskill 
subject matter experts in public sector organizations in, in pro product management, which is an essential skill, I think, if, uh, for digital service delivery. Um, and then it allows them to start thinking, you know, perhaps taking a, bit, a little bit of a mindset shift about how, how the services are funded across that whole, whole life cycle as well, which is, you know, I think when you think about a, a digital service, it's, you know, it starts off with like delivering some, some, some core needs, right, for, for, some, for some citizens. And those needs are long, long lived. They're, they're, those, those needs are not going to go away. But how they are met evolves over time, right? You know, <laughs> as society changes and, you know, as, as, as technology changes. And so that service need, needs to evolve along, 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 alongside that as well. And it has to keep pace with that, with that kind of evolution. And almost, you know, the resource is able to do, has to be defended as well. So I'd love to kind of see a bit more of a shift of, of how, how this stuff is actually funded as well or, or procured. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think your, your second um, was around testing and automation. So tell us, tell us how that plays out and, and why it matters. Well, I mean, you know, but by, by automated tests, like I, I mean, tests that are that are run at all applications of, of, of the layer and service, and they are these are tests that are coded once by the teams, but run many many times by the machines every time you actually make a change. And it's like fundamentally important. It's like a base baseline need, I think, for any 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 successful um, so software project. Um, and, and it's important because as you develop that service or application, you're adding features, you're adding complexity, you're adding customer journeys, and as you do that. The, the test surface area, so all the things you have to test, test all the possible per per permutations, that grows ex exponentially. Like it gets crazy complicated to, to, to be able to test like a even a even a, a mildly complex di di digital service. So by having those kind of comprehensive and, and, and fully automated test suite, it removes uh, like a major barrier to de deployment. And this is really important that teams are able to, to deploy their code at any time, right? Without any, without with confidence, without any side side effects, because the change that this is sitting there that hasn't been deployed has zero value, right? It's actually you know you could avoid it's a sunk cost. There's no value until it's out there in the world and it's being used. And until you get out there in the world, you can't actually learn from it, and you can't actually take those learnings back into the next iteration as well. So that automated testing is really just it's the oil really which allows your delivery to to maintain us. A certain, a certain pace yeah. and it's it's right once run forever right and it's just that it's that gift that, that keeps on giving so yeah I mean, automated <laughs> testing is just it has to be there from day one yeah. to be honest absolutely uh and the last one and th th this is sort of interesting to me was it was changed slowly and i think what struck me is that that I, we're hearing quite a lot of that at the moment that in a sense you know spinning up digital services during the pandemic people were having to move at such pace there's a kind of maybe a change fatigue or something setting in. And so now we need to kind of level level out a bit, recalibrate what, what normal is, not in terms of, you know, COVID itself, but just in terms of what's the pace of change that's sustainable in, you know, in the public sector. So what's your take on this sort of pace of change changing slowly? Well, I think you've got to start... <laughs> change is disruptive, right? No matter who, it's disruptive to individuals, it's, it's disruptive... To, to organizations and you have to you have to learn about more about how individuals and an organization responds to change before you can actually do 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 more of it so i think that that's that's that that's the kind of kind of kind of, kind of key thing i mean when you come into an organization when a supplier like maytech comes into a, into an organization um we have to be really cognizant that the people we're dealing with like their their identities and, and their roles are, are entwined they're kind of they're kind of meshed together and their current ways of working for, form part of that and they have a world and they have a, a world view that, that that's been that's been built up over time um, and suppliers like us are probably going to come in and maybe challenge those 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 kind of pre preconceptions and it's good for us to do that and it's good for them to experience that but we need to do it in the right way um, we need to Bring them on that journey and help them experience it at their own pace and discover the benefits themselves. Um, and then, I think, yeah, I mean, I, th I think I think that's that's the most important thing because you, you you're going to meet resistance to change, right? Unless you get people bought, bought into the change. So by by doing it slowly, piece by piece, you take time to actually sit back, look at the impact of that change, understand understand whether it was, whether it was the right change and what and, and what you should and what you should be able to what you should be able to, should, should be able to do do next um yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> that it, it's it's such a cultural thing that, and you know as much as technology is our friend if the organization isn't ready for it or can't cope with the process of change itself then then the technology or the digital transformation project is just going to fall by the wayside isn't it so yeah t- I, mean, I, think I think what's important is early on it's getting people to everyone involved to understand um what is the value they hold and everyone holds some value right we have we have mm. main experts we have we have tech technology experts and we you know and all and all of that knowledge has to come out and everyone's value has has, has to be felt with, with within that within that that um change whatever whatever's happening yeah absolutely so i i started off by with with a big picture question about how you know how are we in terms of digitalization in the uk which i admit it was a bit unfair so i'm going to finish off with another slightly unfair question and it's kind of uh, i often ask this and it's Again, it's it's often not about a, th- a shiny new thing, but interested in where you see us going next in terms of that digitalization piece in the public sector. Now, there may be specific technologies you expect to take hold more, but also there may be kind of like cultural trends as well, you know, organizational behavioral stuff. But is there anything you think, you know, maybe we're seeing the early signs of particular, you know, way of doing things or particular technologies, and you expect that actually to kind of start ramping up significantly, that, you know, on the horizon? I think there's a few things I'm pretty positive actually about about the outlook because I think we're going to get better at it. I think for a number of reasons, because one, our level of maturity is increasing. People have been doing it for longer now. And I just think we're just going to get better and less mistakes are going to be less mistakes are going to be made. Right. That that's what I think fundamentally I I I, I see that happening. Um, but in terms of trends, we're seeing uh, a huge demand for for data for for, for 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 making better use of data better tools to put data in the hands of individuals that can actually act on it yeah. better understanding of the data they have they have had and so on the back of that i i am positive we're going to see an increase in in technology such as ma- machine learning as we get more confident with that data we can we, and we and we we understand the, the, the value of it um and probably far more powerful data visualization tools and data aggregation tools for individuals to use within, within organizations. I can just see the, I see people are getting way more data, data savvy and I expect data to be utilized at all levels of, of, of organizations in, in, in the future, at every kind of a macro and, and mm. a, a micro level. And I expect to see that data being shared way more widely between departments and organizations as well. Yeah, there's almost a, it's like a almost like a democratization or a socialization of the idea of data sort of cascading through organizations it's not sitting purely with the the people with ddat job titles it's actually and, and actually in uh, society more widely as well like you know everybody's sitting looking at the covid figures <laughs> whilst it's not not a fun thing to do it is increasing general levels of understanding around data familiarity with what does the public sector collate and collect and then also great strides around the systems in the back end that we're able to present this kind of not quite real-time data but you know almost instant you know returns of what infection rates and stuff so it's you can see how yeah we're all going to become more sort of data savvy more more sort of data users it's a bit like looking back and saying well you know who who uses computers you know exactly, exactly oh well you know only 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 the tech people use computers now of course it's ubiquitous so probably a bit of that happening in down the line as well by the sound of it definitely and, and i think just that general increased level of um interoperability i think is 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 going to is going to be key and i think things that we may have tried to do um several years ago we're now able, we're now, we're now able, able to do fairly easily for example when we're um one department verifying the identity of, of, of someone you know to call on data from from another organization i don't think that that would have been possible probably even 18 months to 24 months ago but now it is actually possible there are lots of decent apis around there and services that are coming online yeah and, and enabling us to, 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 to do that uh, there's there's nothing that grinds the gears of end users more than being asked the same thing over and over again right it's a very simple thing it's but yet that you know that battle if you win that battle then you you kind of win the hearts and minds of so many end users because it's just that thing that people just hate doing you do but you but i think even more importantly than that you hear that question or or that viewpoint being put being put forward far more readily now by actual by people that are involved involved in these projects as well 
yeah, the penny's definitely dropped on that one. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, I've I've asked you to to scan the horizon, and it sounds like there's good things coming. You're optimistic, which is great. And I think you know, I think we're hearing similar things from lots of public sector organisations. So reasons to be cheerful uh which is great and was good to end on a positive note um so yeah i just want to say thanks for joining me robin uh, really enjoyed diving into some of that specific example some of that big picture stuff as well so thanks for thanks for coming on the show thanks for having me tim it's been great pleasure so there we have it thanks again to robin for joining me for a fantastic conversation great to hear what's going on in the uk public sector as we look to use digital and data to harness more opportunities to deliver better outcomes I'd also urge you to check out the on-demand viewing opportunity for the Government Transformation Show session, Digitalising Government, which ran back in November, but it's available on demand for you to watch now. Absolutely stellar lineup of speakers and panellists alongside Robin. Uh, we had Gina Gill from the Ministry of Justice, Carl Hoods from Bayes, and Barry Lowry from Government of Ireland, all CIOs and CDIOs. So if you want to hear what the big picture thinking is across those big government departments, where they're seeing the future and where they're seeing opportunities, worth checking that out. I'll put the link in the show notes accompanying the episode so you can enjoy that one. But that's about it for now. I'll be back soon with another conversation with a public sector change maker. Until then, goodbye.